I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Someone was standing behind you, ready to put a hand on your shoulder. But now, you're home at last. has a front door, you know. Surprised? No. I once foreclosed on a poor widow in my early youth. The Almighty foist you upon me periodically by way of retribution. Uh, don't sit down, Harry. You're not going to stay. Oh, now, Uncle Ben, let's not get into an ugly family scene. I just happened to be passing through and thought... And you uh, broke into my study because you knew I'd never let you in the front door. A Kansas City policeman was here this afternoon with a list of swindle charges as long as my arm. I don't need a Kansas City policeman, however. You only show up here when you're in trouble. Look, Uncle Ben, I have to have, to have money. money. <laughs> I know. You're desperate. Outraged innocent. Framed. Because of a few boyish pranks years ago, they're blaming you for something... Shut up! <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, uh, I only want you to know things are going different from now on. Uh, I'm going to get a job. I've heard a lot of people got a lot to make up. But I'm going to do it. I just have to have some money, that's all. You sure? What do you think of this? Fine. I picked it up in an auction in Connecticut, along with an odd lot of stamps and that sack of coins. Good. Look, Uncle Ben, I... I'm I... not uh, wandering from the point, Harry. I'm right on it. A leader is hellacious. Handsome, attractive. Does a lot of damage as a youthful caterpillar. Spends its adult life flitting from flower to flower. Useless, but handsome. Hm. Your trouble is, Harry, you've just run out of flowers. Your prints will be ready in about an hour. Thank you. you get back in town? Tonight. Oh, gee, it's good to see you. Oh, there was someone here looking for you. Who? Don't know. What is it this time? Do we have to talk about that? Guess not. Why don't you meet me in my apartment? I get off at two. Oh, yeah? You know where it is. Yeah. Guess I better get back to work. I'll see. me? Sorry, the name isn't Harry. You wouldn't kid me now, would you, Harry? Look, Buster, I don't... You go Albion. What of you, I want to talk to you a minute.
Relax, Harry, relax. I'm not Kansas City. I'm not even a cop. I'm just a businessman on the prowl for a bright young man like yourself. Hugo Albion. That's right. We met six years ago in Europe. You were making the grand tour with your uncle. Zurich. Coin Collectors Congress. That's right. What's that? Annotated list of current rarities. International Congress of Numismatists. The rarest coins in the world. Take a look. The most valuable coin in the world. Last time, 1878. Minted at Carson City, Nevada, as a political favor to Justin W. Glass. One copy. Just one. One thin dime. Sold by Glass to Hubert Greenwald in 96. From Greenwald to Henri Dubois, 1915. Dubois died at the front in 17. When his collection was inventoried, the dime was missing. Stolen. Never turned up again. Well, that's very interesting. Until last week. Look, old boy, I don't collect coins. Couldn't even use $10,000? Your uncle, Benjamin Randolph, has it. He doesn't know he has it. It's in a six-pound bag of miscellaneous coins he bought at an auction in Connecticut last week. He beat me by ten minutes. I can get $20,000 for the glass dime. I'll split with you. 50-50. You mean you'd have me steal from my uncle? <laughs> He doesn't know he has it, Harry. That's what sold you. It's somewhere in that bag of coins you saw on his desk only a few hours ago. in Uncle Ben's safe deposit box at the bank, where it ought to be.
15. Just two hours since you talked to Hugo here before. Two hours and $10,000 later. About a gram of silver, Harry. You could lose it in a trouser cup. The biggest gram of silver in the world. This is hope. This is adventure. This is good food and travel and love. Thought you were going away to the apartment for me. Where is he? Who? Hugo, the guy I was talking to. Told him I'd be back. Oh, he saddled out the back door a few minutes ago. Is it important? Yeah. Why? This. Take a close look, honey. This is us. You and me. And the world. isn't here. Stop giving me the runaround. I know he's there. Tell him Mrs. Hugo. Hugo wants to talk to you. Hugo? Got great news for you. Yeah, I know, I know. It's in all the press wires right now. Tomorrow morning, page one in four newspapers. I was wrong. He did know he had it in that bag. I think I'm being watched. What'd you do, leave a sign? You mean the police are... Now, you don't know me. You don't come near me, understand? The offer still holds, but you'll have to get someone to play messenger. And not that nightclub girl. They're on to her. And the sooner you get out of that apartment, the better. I think there's a prowl car on the way there right now. What's the matter? The police are on their way. I've got to get out of here. But where are you going? I don't know. Hotels are out. Somewhere they would... Where? The last place in the world they'd look for me. To Harry with all my love. Almost pawned that once in San Francisco, but something inside me said no. Never argue with a hunch. Edith? Dear, dear Edith. You kept it. Of course I kept it. That's nice. I sold mine. Shame on you. Shame on you. The diamond was a phony. What did you expect? I don't know. You know, you're without question the most worthless member of the male sex on the whole planet Earth. The winner and still champion. I still get qualms that I, I can't quite identify when I look at your picture. <laughs> Love of a mother for her idiot child. Don't smile. That's a very intelligent answer. How are you doing, Harry? Oh, you know. Yeah, I know. Or I ought to. I had four years of it. No money, no job. Horse parlors. Bookies beating on the door after Welch bets. Maybe I should have sat like Madame Lafarge and knitted all your crimes into a scarf 20 feet long. And then hung you with it. That's my trouble, I guess. I should have been more like Madame Lafarge. Maybe I could have made a man of you. You had the good sense not to try. I don't have good sense at all. If I did, I wouldn't have let you in tonight. When you came barging up to my door at 3 o'clock in the morning. Telling me you just happened to be in the neighborhood. Thought you'd pop in to be friendly. In my heart of hearts, I'm all gold. Harry. I know, I, I'm impossible. It was nice of you, though, to keep the ring. I, I feel a little guilty about, about telling mine. I forgave you 10 seconds ago. Tell me, um, what's happened since that awful day in the courtroom? Any men in your life? Mm, yes. There's an accountant, nice, respectable, conservative, 8,000 a year and a future. Sounds dull. He is, though. Then there's a fellow that owns a drugstore. He's divorced, too. His wife's almost as worthless as you are. Maybe I should give you her phone number. Well... No. 
And there's a college boy. He's awfully nice, but he's too young for me. That's all. How about you? Oh, it's all pretty drab. Oh? What about Flash Gun Casey of the uh, nightclub circuit? Marilyn? You have a string of nightclub photographers? Marilyn. I wonder what she's doing now. Haven't you seen her? Oh, no, not in years. Hold it. Don't make a move. Mm -mm. As you were. I just wanted to see if it was still the same. Well? It is. There are blankets and a pillow in the hall closet. You can sleep on the couch. Thanks, pal. Harry. Huh? Thanks for keeping the ring. Good night. Good night. to deserve this. Just like old times. Just like old times. The Associated Press says Uncle Ben is livid. Poor Uncle Ben. I bet it's petitioning the governor to send out the militia. Does it surprise you that I can joke about this, Harry? I don't know. But I'm not responsible for you anymore. I'm not your wife. I can afford to be amused. Poor Uncle Ben. He can't divorce you. He's stuck. You're stuck, too. Do you want to know why I really did it? That's why. That's why he kept the ring. Edith, would you go for a new start? No, Harry. New home in a new country. Enough money for a new beginning. Leave the past behind, just the two of us. This is funny. Or it ought to be. You're lying to me. I, I know you are. But I, I want to hear it anyway. I couldn't come to you empty-handed, could I? So we'll take the money and go to Havana. Buy a cabana with a red tile roof. You'll get a linen suit and go to work like all the other respectable men. Life will be just peaches and cream. Okay. I should be insulted, I guess, that you'd think I'd believe you. I don't. Thanks a lot. What do you want me to do, Harry? I thought you weren't interested. I didn't say that. I said I didn't believe you. I guess that's my trouble. I'm too interested. I don't believe you, Harry, but for some silly feminine reason, I love you. What do you want me to do? Okay, I'll tell you. Harry? I thought I told you not to call here. Well, I couldn't help it, Dora. I mean, I've got to know. Where is she? She went to find Hugo. Did she take it with her? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be wonderful, darling. France, Italy, Switzerland. Uh, no, no, you have the wrong number. This is Greystone 56631. Not at all. <clears throat> you had me worried. I don't trust Hugo. You were too long. What happened? Nothing. I don't know why I got to imagining things. I don't know whether it's smart or not letting you go out alone. It's good to see you, darling. How about a cup of tea or something? Harry, aren't you going to ask me about the dime? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a performer. Did I ever tell you you're a con man's con man? All right, Edith, what about the dime? He'll have a certified check waiting for me tonight at his hotel room. Nine o'clock. You're not so bad yourself. Then I'll 
pack my things, quit my job, and sometime bright and early next week, we'll sail away into a cloud on our second honeymoon. You think that's funny? No, I don't think it's funny. I... I'm sorry now I've gone this far, Harry. I don't think I can take another brush off. And that's what you're brewing, isn't it? You've got to believe me just this once. That's who it was on the phone when I came in, wasn't it? Flash gun Casey. She doesn't mean a thing to me. I love you. Who is on the phone, Harry? It was the wrong number. Of course. Well, why don't I get us some dinner? How's that again? I said I'm going back to Edith. I'll repeat it a third time if you like. Dear old Edith. I don't call her that anymore. Harry. Harry, get with it. What's happened? You got me. Oh. Why, that wide eyes. Shut you... up. Noble, too. Look. Look at this. Where do I get off? The Chamber Street Ferry? I don't know. I guess it just comes a time in a guy's life when he grows up. You can't swindle your way through life for 30 years and go up overnight. All right, have it your own way then. But if you're smart, you'll unpack this now and talk your way back to that nightclub job tomorrow. Here you are, Lieutenant. Too bad to interrupt your trip. Let's have it. I haven't got it. Don't lie to me. I'm not. Maybe I better spell this out for you, Mr. Randolph. If you return the coin now, your uncle might not file charges. On the other hand, this is the last straw, Harry. You lied, connived, deceived me. And now you've stolen from me. I don't give a hang about the family name now. I want that coin, and I want it now. Or else... Or else what? Five years, maybe more. What time is it? It's 8.30. Just give me a little time. I think I can get it back for you. Hello? Yes, he's here. It's for you, darling. Hello? Hello, Harry. Have you still got the dime? Yes, I... Yes, I've still got it. She has it. She still has it. We'll have it back in a half hour. Look, Edith, listen to me carefully now. Everything depends now on the glass dime, doesn't it, Harry? Your future, your freedom, your chance for the first time in your life to play square with Edith. Edith, please, listen to me. We're not going through with it. I want you to bring that dime back to me here. Where, Harry? Where is that, Harry? Where do you want me to bring it? I came to Marilyn's apartment to tell her we were through. I told her I was going back to you. You've got to believe me. I tried to call you at my apartment. I didn't want to call Flash Gun Casey at first. I, I was afraid of what I might find. Edith, please, please believe me. Don't explain, Harry. I told you I, I, I couldn't stand one more brush off. This is it. Just one more chance, that's all. I've got to have that dime back, or... Or what, Harry? Prison. Hooray! You would ever believe me, no matter what I... Excuse me for interrupting. Deposit ten cents for another three minutes, please. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Edith, I've got to have that dime back. Deposit ten cents for another three minutes, please. Here's your dime, Harry. No. No, Edith, don't do it. I don't know where you are. Don't. No, don't. All right, Harry. <laughs> 